3D printing has completely changed my view on life. Instead of buying stuff, I'm now designing and printing them myself, usually in a matter of hours. It wasn't always easy though. I'm surprised my first printer is still in one piece after all the trouble I had with it. I want to help you avoid that by showing you everything I wish I knew back then. We'll take a look at how to check your printer, how to calibrate everything, and what are some of the first things you should print. I'm assuming you've already assembled your printer, but don't turn it on just yet. You should also have one of the slicers installed. Any one will do for now. With that said, let's begin by going over the printer first. I can't possibly cover every printer out there, but the majority of things are common to all of them. Take this guide as a general overview of what to do. If you get stuck, search that topic online for your specific printer. First, check that there's nothing physically wrong with the printer, especially if it's Chinese. Their quality control is a joke and you never know what you'll get. Check that the frame isn't bent and that everything feels solid. Nothing on the frame should be loose. Check that the couplers are tightened against the Z rod. Continue by checking if the belts are tightened enough. Most printers have a way to tighten the belts, but it's also important that the belts aren't too tight. The ideal tension is when you can pluck it like a guitar string. Next, the bed shouldn't rattle or move sideways. If it wobbles, turn the printer on its side and find the eccentric nut. It's a special nut that moves sideways, left and right, as you tighten it. Simply tightening it isn't enough, because it will eventually end up in the same position. Instead, tighten it just a little and check the bed. Repeat until the bed feels sturdy, but it should still be easy to move by hand. The same principle is used to tighten the hot end carriage. Slowly tighten the eccentric nut until it's firmly in place, but not so much that it's hard to move by hand. And you'll find the last eccentric nut on the other side of the frame. You know what to do. Ensure that the bottom tube is completely inserted on both ends. It shouldn't move if you try to pull it out. The X gantry should be parallel to the bed. You can turn the coppers by hand to get it leveled. It's okay if it's a little off. We'll compensate for that later, but do it as good as you can. Finally, check and tighten all the screws, but don't use too much force. The screw that holds the heater cartridge in place is especially critical. If it's loose, the heater might shake loose and fall out, which is a major fire risk. Before you turn it on, quickly check all the cables again and that they are plugged in correctly. If your printer has a voltage selector, make sure it's set to the correct position. If everything looks good, turn the printer on. After a few seconds, you should see your ambient temperature on the screen. On some printers, the fan turns on immediately as well. Let's see if all the motors and end stops are working. Go to the menu and find the auto home option. It's called home all on some printers. Both the bed and the hot end should start moving until they end up in the home position. I highly recommend that you upgrade the firmware first before doing anything else. Every Chinese printer that I know of comes with important safety features disabled. It's unbelievable and very dangerous. Without them, you're risking a fire and it's really important that you prevent that. You can continue without doing it for a day or two if you have to buy an Arduino first, but don't delay it for longer than that. And under no circumstances should you leave the printer running alone before you do it. TH3D has an excellent firmware and installation guide. I've put the link in the description. You might need an Arduino for the firmware upgrade, as is the case with Ender 3 or CR10. The CR10S has a different board and can be connected directly to your computer. 
Not only will it enable safety features, you'll also get better print quality and additional options such as filament changing, PID auto-tuning and more. The second upgrade to prevent fires is to make sure that the printer has a MOSFET. MOSFET is a type of transistor that handles the high current for heating the bed. Without it, the board or the wires can overheat and catch fire. Some Chinese printers might already have one, but even then it might be underrated and you still have to replace it. The first calibration that we'll do is with the extruder. This will ensure that the extruder motor is feeding in just the right amount of filament. We just make a mark on the filament, extrude a certain amount and then measure how much it actually came through. Using that number, we can adjust the steps value. I've provided a link below to a great guide by MetaHackers. The next step is the most important by far, bed leveling. Without a properly leveled bed, nothing else will work, so take your time and do it right. Too many guides are suggesting using paper to level the bed. While that might be better than nothing, it's not nearly enough. A much better way is to print calibration squares and then adjust each corner accordingly. I've already made a separate video that goes into more details, so check it out before you continue. If your printer only has glass surface, it might be difficult to get good adhesion. I highly suggest that you buy a mirror instead, they work much better. Now that the correct amount of filament is coming in, we have to calibrate how much is coming out as well. Download and slice this small cube, but make sure that you print it only with a single perimeter and a flow rate of 100%. You might get a better result with two perimeters on some printers. When it's done, grab a caliper and measure the wall thickness. It should be the same as the extrusion width set in your slicer. If it's not, adjust the flow rate accordingly and print another cube. If you don't have a caliper, then this step isn't too important and you can always adjust the flow rate visually later on when you'll print a test model. It's very likely that you'll have to re-level your bed once you change the flow rate, so I suggest you repeat bed leveling now. Our next step will be very easy. It's called PID calibration. The printer basically learns how to heat the nozzle so that the temperature stays stable. The process is almost automatic, even more so if you've updated your firmware. You can then simply select the auto tuning option from the menu and then save the new settings. I've written a full guide on my webpage, check the description. Every filament is different and there is no ideal printing temperature. For PLA, a good starting point is 205 degrees for the nozzle and 60 degrees Celsius for the bed. The easiest way to find out what works best is to print a temperature tower. When set up correctly, the printer will print it with different temperatures as it gets higher. At the end, you simply look at which temperature produced the best results and use that for future prints. Now that we went through all that trouble, it's time for the ultimate test. This model will test virtually everything. With the calibrations we did, you should already get good results on your first try. As is the case with 3D printing though, it can always get better. So, where do you go if you have any issues? My favorite resource is the Visual Troubleshooting Guide by Simplify 3D. They have covered every issue that you can think of and how to fix it. This should be your first stop every time you don't know how to fix something. Now that you can hopefully print it good results, you might be wondering what to print next. There are a few upgrades that you should do first. If your printer didn't come with a strain relief for the bed cables, you should print one right away. For some printers, the second important upgrade is the filament guide. Without it, the filament will touch the greasy Z-rod, which will eventually jam your hot end. Trust me, you do not want to take your hot end apart anytime soon. Replacing the stock fan with the radial fan will have the biggest impact on print quality that you can do. 
you're looking for a 5015 fan, but make sure that you buy one with the correct voltage for your printer. You will also need to print a special fan that will cool down your model better. I recommend the Bullseye model. It comes with different options for different fans and bed leveling sensors. Just don't forget to print it with PATG or ABS. With the dose upgrades done, let's look at a few that will simply make your life easier. You should always use a dust filter. My favorite is this one that you can simply clip on. These leveling knobs will make leveling the bed much easier. Speaking of bed leveling, I could never remember which way I'm supposed to turn it, so having something like this really helps. I prefer this style of button over the round one, it's much easier to turn. Placing a concrete slab under your printer will make it almost silent. If you plan on changing the nozzle often, then I highly recommend printing a torque wrench. It will prevent you from over tightening the nozzle and breaking something. Speaking of which, never try to remove or install the nozzle on a cold hot end. Always heat it up first. Print yourself a good spool holder. I've tried out a lot of them, but I ended up using the universal holder by Creative Tools. It works for every spool, even the large ones that don't fit anywhere else. You should also check out the Master Spool Initiative. The idea is that you order filament without a spool, but instead you print one yourself. Speaking of filament, you'll likely use up your first one very soon. When buying new ones, avoid the cheap stuff, but you shouldn't spend too much money either. From my experience, everything around the 20 euros, dollars or pounds per kilogram seems to be the sweet spot. Isopropyl alcohol is the best for cleaning the bed after every few prints. Finally, Octoprint. It connects directly to your printer and you can then control everything in your browser. You can upload files, monitor or cancel your prints, attach a webcam and there are tons of useful plugins already available. What I like the most is that I can check on my printer even when I'm not at home. If you're short on ideas on what to print, browse popular models on Thingiverse or My Mini Factory. After a while, you'll want to design your own stuff. Tinkercad is great for beginners and you can do anything you want with Fusion 360. With that said, you should now have a fully functional printer and everything you need to get started. Good luck and happy printing!